the Rutaceae, the Rue or Citrus family. Characteristics, uh, these guys are dicots, they're found worldwide, um, mostly trees, mostly woody, um, not too common to see too many herbs. Uh, the leaves are uh, fairly unique in that they have oil glands in them, which are called pellucid, which means uh, clear. Flowers are radially symmetric, often quite attractive. The fruits, a wide variety of uh, different kinds of fruits formed. Uh, many economically important species in this group, oranges, lemons, all the citrus, uh, kumquats, and uh, a few other uh, things. The flowers, you can see that radial symmetry there, uh, generally quite attractive, usually twice as many stamens as there are petals. And again, uh, the um, uh, oil glands in the leaves are uh, usually pleasant, but uh, not always uh, pleasant smelling. We're in the sap and dailies order, and so that's the same as the Anacardiaceae with the poison ivy and um, pistachios and uh, mangoes and all those, and then also the sap and Aceae, which had maples and uh, a few other interesting um, species in it. This is the Rutaceae with about 160 genera, 1,500 species, so a respectable size family. We are in the Sapindales in the rosid uh, section of uh, on our plant um, evolutionary tree. The many notable species, uh, mandarin oranges, pomelos, citrones, uh, key limes, kumquats, Sichuan pepper, and uh, locally prickly ash. Uh, many uh, different types of uh, citrus. Uh, I'll explain later why we don't have a species name for all those. Uh, grapefruit, lemon, lime, tangelo, orange, tangerine. You can see the very attractive uh, flower there of a lime plant. So uh, citrus relatives. Uh, all of these uh, or originated in Southeast Asia. It's, it's assumed, it's thought uh, today. They have spread worldwide and uh, been cultivated for so long, it's kind of hard to tell where some of them started. However, um, uh, it's thought, um, and, and they've been hybridized uh, so severely that it's hard to tell what's what, but it's taught, thought that there was an original four uh, genera that were, um, they have been used uh, to hybridize and then hybridize the hybrids to produce uh, most of our other uh, types of citrus. So the mandarin orange, the pomelo, the citrone, and the key lime are uh, considered uh, sort of the basic uh, citrus species that have uh, led, led rise to um, all of the other uh, things that we consider citrus today. In particular, the orange, uh, the sweet orange. Uh, you can't get much better than a good orange. It is probably a hybrid uh, between uh, Citrus maxima and Citrus reticulata, which would be the pomelo and the uh, mandarin orange. Um, hybridized and cultivated for so long, though, uh, it is hard to know. It's been seen in China for at least 4,500 years. Brought to the Mediterranean and, and much of the rest of the world, the North America in the 1500s. It's now considered the most cultivated tree in the world. Although, again, that's going to depend on how you define what an orange is. Uh, 70 million tons now produced worldwide. Uh, Brazil is really big, uh, California and Florida, of course. The uh, citrus fruit is called a Hesperidium. Uh, navel oranges are sort of uh, an interesting botanical freak. Um, they, uh, there was one mutant that was observed um, in the 1800s in Brazil that had sort of a second fruit growing on it, uh, growing at the apex of the, uh, the main fruit that sort of looks like a navel, like a human navel, so it got called navel orange. And uh, they are seedless, which is attractive on one hand to people selling oranges, on the other hand it makes it a little bit more difficult to get more of them. So um, pretty much all of the navel oranges that are around today all originated uh, from that one tree and are all clones of that tree. The rest of the citrus uh, is very difficult to figure out uh, what's what. Uh, grapefruits, um, some of these do have um, official genus species names, even though they're hybrids and, and often known hybrids. So grapefruit's often called citrus paradisi. Um, it's figured that it was uh, the pumelo and some other orange uh, hybrid. Uh, Seville orange are called sour oranges. They're uh, hybrids of the pomelo and the mandarin orange. And um, it goes on and on like that. Uh, the lemon is often uh, written citrus hybrid lemon, uh, limon. Uh, and that's actually a mystery. They really don't know uh, quite where it came from. It could have been sour orange and citron or um, lime and citron. The mandarin orange uh, just by itself has uh, has spawned uh, numerous um, uh, subspecies, the tangerine, clementine, and satsuma, um, just a few of the more uh, popular ones. 
However, the tangelo is a hybrid between the tangerine and the grapefruit. And remember, the grapefruit itself is a hybrid of something else, so uh, it gets really complicated very quickly. Uh, and the larger limes that we call lime instead of key lime is probably a hybrid of key lime and citron. Kumquat, not a hybrid of anything. Little bitty oranges, or look like little bitty oranges. They actually are um, uh, a genus all their own and um, have been split up and put back together a few times. So for one time, there was four species of Fortunella. Now they've uh, lumped them all back into Citrus hepatica. Um, they're small. They're um, widely cultivated. They're more hardy than uh, many oranges. And uh, interestingly enough, you consume the whole thing or just the rind. So we have Mr. Produce Guy is going to explain about kumquats. Hello, everyone. I am your Produce Guy. In this episode, we want to talk about one of the smallest members of the citrus family. And that is these little guys here called kumquats. Now, these are a very unique fruit. They originate from China. Unlike other citrus fruits where you want to peel them and eat the inside, these fruits you eat either the skin or the whole thing. Very interesting. The sweetness and flavor are contained in the skin, but the inside has a sour quality to it. Now, these are great to make marmalades, jellies, jams, or you can slice them up and put them in a salad. They are wonderful that way. The most common way, though, is to just eat them whole, skin and all, seeds, everything. And they are delightful. A little sort of a tart uh, wake-me-up. When selecting kumquats at the store, you want to go for the nice orange color. You can see blemish-free skin there. That's a perfect one that you'd want to pick up. I have an example here of those that are not ripe, and I'm not sure that they will ripen. So stay away from the green. You want to go for the nice orange skin. That is what will be ready uh, for you to use when you get them home. Like other members of the citrus family, kumquats are very high in vitamin C. And because they're so tiny, they're almost like vitamin C pills, if you would. Just pop a couple of those, chew them up, and you'll have a good percentage of your vitamin C for the day. Kumquats, an old and interesting fruit how the uh, center is sour and the skin is sweet. You can also use these, you can candy the skin, make a very interesting little candy garnish for uh, your dishes that you want to serve, especially desserts, a nice little cheesecake with some uh, candied kumquat skin sprinkled on top, very unusual. Thanks so much for being with us. I am your produce guy. This has been Kumquats today. We'll look forward to seeing you next time Reminding you, as always, that fresh is best. Thanks for watching. Mm. That was good. And this concludes kumquats. Uh, on to rue, which has uh, gained a little bit of fame recently because of uh, uh, the Hunger Games movie. Uh, somebody named Rue uh, in the movie, and apparently uh, using rue uh, in the movie. Um, this is another Mediterranean plant. Um, it's been used for a long time for a lot of different uh, medicinals and, um, um, you know, keeping witches at bay and so on. It's also considered a symbol of regret. Uh, the leaves are used fresh or dry in some uh, medicines, although um, generally um, even the most um, uh, pro-medicinal sites uh, these days warn against using it because uh, it can even be fatal if the doses are large enough. So. Um, probably best to wear it in an amulet around your neck and not uh, consume it. Uh, some people claim that the, um, uh, the suit of clubs uh, in card games is uh, based on the leaf of this plant. Seems to me like there'd be a lot of other things that also might be based on, but uh, the plant has been used uh, for centuries um, for um, a lot of different um, uh, cultural things, so it could be indeed that's what it was used for. It's been mentioned um, in the uh, Christian Bible. Shakespeare talks about it a couple times. Gulliver's Travels got it, so uh, uh, it's been uh, part of uh, cultural lore for a long time. Pepper uh, spice uh, plant uh, that is used uh, and doesn't seem to have uh, medicinal problems is uh, Sichuan pepper, Xanthoxylum. Simulans uh, is apparently very common in Asian cuisines, and other, gener other species of xanthoxylum are used um, as spices in other cuisines uh, worldwide, in Africa and different places. 
not related to black pepper, sweet pepper, chili peppers, but uh, nevertheless called pepper. The seed husks are used, not the seeds. Uh, occasionally the leaves, occasionally it's uh, infused into an oil. Um, there's a common seasoning in, in Chinese food, Asian food, called five slice powder, and this is one of the um, primary ingredients. It produces a tingling sensation, um, so apparently that's uh, some of the uh, interest it raises in, uh, as a spice. Iowa natives, um, just in the far east side, uh, southeast edge of Iowa, we do have uh, uh, an Iowa native um, from this family called a hop tree or wafer ash, Telia trifoliata. Much, much more, um, you know, Appalachian Mountains uh, down into Texas kind of um, um, tree. And then uh, much more common in Iowa is um, prickly ash, uh, sometimes called yellowwood, Xanthocylum americanum, uh, same genus as the Sichuan pepper, interesting. And of course, uh, xantho means yellow and xylem means wood. Uh, and sure enough, if you cut these uh, open, the wood is quite yellow. <coughs> If you manage to cut it open, you're doing pretty good, though, because they have some uh, pretty Im uh, impressive thorns on them, which uh, you can see why it's called prickly ash. The leaves look a lot like an ash tree, and uh, they do have these significant thorns on them. Not in the ash family, though, obviously. Toxicity um, kind of varies. Uh, as I mentioned already, rue can uh, be fatal um, if too much of it's eaten and other members of that family. Um, however, all the um, citrus out there, obviously, are not too much toxicity. Uh, grapefruit's known to interact with some pharmaceuticals. Um, they found that it can increase the um, uh, interaction, um, the effectivity of some pharmaceuticals, although um, it does seem that, um, you know, so there's a little bit of hysteria in the media about that, too. It might not be quite as uh, intense as people uh, want to claim. Uh, in uh, all cases of toxicity, it seems to be the, the coumarins uh, that the plants um, uh, make are responsible for uh, the effects. For more information, Wikipedia, uh, interesting history on uh, citrus and all the hybrids and hybrids of the hybrids on the third link there. And uh, sure enough, there's a kumquat festival in Florida once a year you might want to check into. That concludes the Rutaceae.